And welcome everybody to Shaken Gaming and Mass Effect 2. We already played number one. Captain Shepard on Insanity difficulty made it through. And this time we're probably going to do the same, but it's not going to be as easy a journey, let me tell you that. Mass Effect 2 is definitely no joke when it comes to the difficulty department. Compared to Mass Effect 1 at least, the difficulty curve is kind of scaling massively. You'll see what I mean. Let's get into this. We can import some characters. Disregard this. This is going to be a little secret here. We are going to import Mass Effect, uh, Mass Effect 1 character. We are going to continue the story that we played in the, uh, in the previous game because these games, in case you guys are new to the series, they do have continuity. Meaning, the choices you made in the first game reflect things on the second game. For example, if I had killed some characters in the first game, they would simply not exist in the second game, right? And so on and so forth. Many choices affecting each game. All right, let's go ahead and import a Mass Effect 1 character and let's do some chat as well. Doesn't really matter which one I pick, I think. They all look the same to me. I'm gonna just pick the top one because that's probably the most recent one, I guess. Let's go with that. All right, now, uh, this is a difficult game, so I say let's play it on casual. What do you guys think? No? No, I don't like it either. How about normal? Are we a normal gamer? Anybody? Anybody wants normal? I don't see a lot of ye any yeses, so <laughs> gonna keep going. Let's see where I can entice you. Veteran. Anybody want veteran? I only see Paul saying hard, so I'm guessing everybody else kind of wants more than hard since they are not chiming in. Hardcore? Nobody seems to chime in for hardcore either. You guys are testing me. How about insanity? How about we go for the toughest, roughest difficulty in the game again? <laughs> Do you want to see the shark monster die a few times in this live stream? <laughs> Is the question here. You know what? I'm gonna do insanity anyway in all three games. I'm deciding this right now because there is a badge of honor in this game that says you completed all three games on insanity difficulty. And damn it, I want that badge. <laughs> I'm not big on achievements, but for once in my life, let me get one. I mean, this is one of my favorite games. I need to wear that badge of honor. All right, auto save, squad power usage, subtitles, yada yada. Yes, we're good. Let's go. All right, let's see. This is the uh, things we did. In the previous game, yes, we were uh, Paragon, we were the good guy, we saved Rex. Actually, there's gonna be a whole thing recapping the entire game, so let's get going. Things are going to be explained very well at some point, you'll see. For now, let's see what happens to uh, Captain Shepard, who thwarted the danger of the first Reaper to enter civilized space. And now he's searching the space for the remains of that threat. Shepard did everything right. More than we could have hoped for. Commander Shepard uncovered the truth. And still it's not enough. We're at war. No one wants to admit it, but humanity is under attack. But they're sending him to fight Geth. Geth. We both know they're not the real threat. The Reapers are still out there. And it's up to us to stop them. The Council will never trust Cerberus. They'll never accept our help. Even after everything humanity has accomplished. But Shepard... They'll follow him. He's a hero, a bloody icon. But he's just one man. If we lose Shepard, humanity might well follow. Then see to it that we don't lose him. Why would we lose Shepard? One month after the devastating Geth attack on the Citadel, the galactic community struggles to rebuild. The Alliance fleet made a tremendous sacrifice to save the Citadel and earn humanity a membership in the prestigious group. Now the Council is forced to respond to the evidence in the Reapers, and normal machines that eradicate all organic civilization every 50,000 years have returned. Took well, yada yada, they did something that you can pause and read. Man, that text is fast. Faster than our Normandy. 
Let's see how Shepard is doing these days. Disengaging FTL drives. Emission sinks active. Board is green. We are running silent. We're wasting our time. Four days searching up and down this sector, and we haven't found any sign of Geth activity. Three ships went missing here in the past month. Something happened to them. My money's on slavers. The Terminus system is crawling with them. Picking up something on the long-range scanner. Unidentified vessel. Hmm, looks like a cruiser. Doesn't match any known signatures. Uh-oh. What could it be? What is this new threat? Cruiser is changing course. Now on intercept trajectory. Can't be. Stealth systems are engaged. There's no way a Geth ship could possibly... It's not the Geth. Brace for evasive maneuvers! Definitely not Geth. Extremely more dangerous than Geth. Kinetic barriers down. Multiple hull breaches. Weapons offline. Somebody get that fire out. Well, this doesn't look good at all. Is everybody going to survive, I wonder? Shepard! Distress beacon is ready for launch. Will the Alliance get here in time? The Alliance won't abandon us. We just need to hold on. Get everyone onto the escape shuttle. Joker's still in the cockpit. He won't evacuate. I'm not leaving either. I need you to get the crew onto the evac shuttle. I'll take care of Joker. Shepard. Liara, go. Now. Aye, aye. See you on the other side, my blue love. Now let's go save Joker, who stubbornly doesn't want to get off the ship. Everybody in! Go, go, go! Oh boy, casualties. Is this going to be the only casualty though? Is the critical question. Well, that looks beyond saving. Abandoned ship. But not before we retrieve Joker. We are the last two. We are the last two members remaining on board. Oh, take a look at them. Scale of destruction for this ship. We can see Earth, baby. <laughs> that's how bad it is. Well, that's actually not Earth, but some kind of planet. And there is Joker. All right, betting time. Two crew members remain. Only one will make it out alive. Come on, Joker. We have to get out of here. No, I won't abandon the Normandy! I can still save her! The Normandy's lost. Going down with the ship won't change that. Yeah, okay. Help me up. Uh-oh. They're coming around for another attack. They are relentless. Time to skedaddle! Let's go! Oh 
Oh no. Our commander is floating in space. No ship. No escape shuttles. And nowhere, as it seems. I guess this is the end of Commander Shepard before we even get started. I guess we're gonna have to defend the galaxy a different way this time. Or will we? We'll find out soon. Mass Effect 2 starts now. Mass Effect Genesis, yes, this is the interactive comic. In case you guys are new to the series or do not remember what we did in the first game, this is going to kind of be a 10 minute comic that says everything that happened in the game so far. I'm going to play this because this actually reflects also the choices that I did, that I did, like who I romanced, who I saved, who I didn't, things like that. So I think this is kind of a critical part of the story. Let's go ahead and see what happened in Mass Effect 1. Just another routine mission. Why do they always say that before a mission? Of course it's routine. You haven't done anything yet. It's everything that happens along the way. The choices you make, the paths you choose, that turn the routine into anything but. Of course, that's how it started. A routine mission, answering a distress call. And look where that got me. We were testing out the Normandy, Captain Anderson's new ship, when the distress call came in. An Alliance patrol on Eden Prime had been attacked. They'd seen something they couldn't explain. And whatever it was, it was massive. I hit the ground with my lieutenant, Caden Olenko. A good kid, loyal, by the book, with a talent for biotics. We came across the lone survivor of the patrol, Gunnery Chief Ashley Williams. A soldier to the core. Tough, disciplined, ready to take on whatever came her way. Ashley joined up with us and took us to the spot where she lost her squad. That's when we saw it. The ship. Like nothing I'd ever seen. It was massive, scorching the colony and everything around it as it blasted away. We followed the path of destruction to an artifact, a beacon left by a long dead race called the Protheans. The colony had dug it up and whoever attacked them had tried to take it. Chief Williams made the mistake of getting too close. It hit her with some type of energy. I grabbed her and threw her out of the way. And that's when it hit me. Hard. Every muscle in my body went rigid. I couldn't move. Could barely breathe. Everything went black. And then I saw something. A vision. A dream. A nightmare. By the time I woke up, we were halfway to the Citadel on our way to meet the Council. I was expected to explain what I'd seen. Anderson came along. So did Adina, our political representative on the Citadel. With those two heavyweights, it seemed reasonable we could persuade the Council that the ship we'd seen was a potential threat, as was the individual behind the attacks. The main suspect for the Eden Prime Massacre was a Turian Spectre named Saren. He'd been seen by one of the survivors from the colony at Eden Prime, and there was some evidence to suggest that the ship was connected to Saren. But even Adina's pointed accusations weren't enough to convince the Council. They just couldn't believe one of their chosen elite Spectres could be guilty of something like that. They needed proof. Which meant I needed proof. Fortunately, I wasn't alone in my search. Garrus, another Turian, wanted to help. A top agent for Citadel security. Despite orders from his superiors that he shouldn't get involved, he told me he was suspicious of Saren, and he had some useful leads. More importantly, he was willing to share them. That led me to Rex, the biggest, nastiest looking Krogan bounty hunter I'd ever seen. He turned out to be more than just a brute. It was his intel that led to a fugitive with incriminating evidence on Sarah. The fugitive turned out to be an energetic little quarian named Tally. A tech expert with a knack for hacking, she'd procured some information on Sarah. Evidence that proved Saren was dirty. Tally's evidence proved that Saren was responsible for the massacre on Eden Prime, and that the immense warship we'd spotted was in fact Saren's flagship. But it went much further. 
Saren was trying to find a way to bring back a race of sentient machines from dark space. Machines allegedly responsible for cleansing the galaxy of all organic life. These Reapers were blamed for wiping out all life 50,000 years ago, including the Protheans, then disappearing back through the mass relays to dark space, leaving no trace they'd ever been. That explained why Saren was after the beacon, and it made some sense out of my visions. But not much else. We couldn't convince the Council that the Reapers were a threat, but they agreed Saren had to be stopped. They stripped him of his Spectre status and gave me the honor of becoming the first human Spectre. My first task? Bring down Saren. Anderson decided to stay behind, giving up his ship, the Normandy. He told me I would need it more than he would. He also pointed me in a direction. Liara, a Prothean expert, adept in biotics, and maybe most importantly, the daughter of Benezia, Saren's top lieutenant. My blue love! Like most Asari, as beautiful as she is intelligent, and born with a unique ability to meld with other species. Liara was able to help me decipher some of the vision the beacon had given me. Nothing concrete, but it gave me some clues. And a new appreciation for the Asari. Her technique for accessing my vision was unexpected, but not at all unpleasant. Ashley was a little concerned about the connection I shared with Liara. As commander, I knew either relationship had the potential to interfere with the mission. I told Liara about how I felt. Apparently, she'd felt it too. But we agreed we wouldn't let it get in the way of our mission. Finding Saren. Thanks to Liara's help, we had our next lead. Benezia. Saren had taken her to Novaria, where he'd enslaved a dangerous race of insect-like creatures, the Rachni. He ordered Benezia to use the same technique Liara had used on me to extract information from the Rachni Queen. The Queen's drones were everywhere, and they weren't happy. We had to fight through hundreds of them to get to Benezia. By the time we arrived, Saren was gone, with the information. I tried to reason with Benezia, but Saren had indoctrinated her. He had somehow acquired the ability to control people's actions and wills. Benezia wouldn't surrender, and Liara was forced to watch her mother die in her arms. And I was left with an angry, dangerous Rachni queen to deal with. She claimed her drones would do no harm if I released her. But the Rachni had terrorized the galaxy before. I couldn't do it. I wouldn't doom an entire species for past sins. And the queen was true to her word. She left and took her army of drones with her. With Saren's top lieutenant dead, he was quickly running out of time and places to hide. I tracked him down at his base on Vermeer, but we soon learned it was more than a base of operations. It was a breeding ground. Saren was breeding an army of Krogan. He'd found a cure for the genophage, a disease inflicted on the Krogan to prevent them from breeding and taking over the galaxy. But the Krogan Saren was breeding were slaves mindless beasts that obeyed Saren's will. I had to destroy the base and all its research. Rex disagreed, violently. Rex wanted the genophage cure for his people. I tried to convince him to help me destroy it, that these Krogan weren't real, but he wouldn't back down. Fortunately, Rex is smarter than he looks. He realized this wasn't the way to help his people and that Saren was the real threat. When we finally got to the center of the base, I realized just how close Saren was to completing his plan. He was already in communication with the Reapers. Sovereign, Saren's flagship we'd all assumed was just a ship, was a Reaper. It spoke to me, threatened me. I could feel the menace it had for every living thing. It wanted me dead, it wanted us all dead. And I knew it was capable of doing just that. What I couldn't understand was why Saren would help it. But there was no time to think about it. Sovereign knew where we were. We had to destroy the base and get the hell out. I split up my team in two squads, sending Ash with one and Caden with the other as a distraction. We had a nuke and we planned to use it. Before we could detonate the bomb, Saren showed up. We fought. I stalled him to make time for my team. And in talking to him, I realized the truth. It wasn't Saren who was indoctrinating everyone. It was Sovereign. The Reaper. And Saren was in deeper than all of them. He tried to convince me he was still in control. Said he found a way to reduce the Reaper's influence, but he was kidding himself. Or believing the lies Sovereign was telling him. Before I could convince him to stop, 
He ran, leaving me just seconds to extract my squad mates. I tried, but I wasn't fast enough. I could only save one of them. Caden was a good man and a great soldier, but I had to choose, and I chose Ash. That was the last time Saren would slip away from me. I knew then, the next time we met, one of us would die. With my team mostly intact, we chased Saren and his army to Ilos, a long-lost planet that had once belonged to the Protheans. As we prepared for what we knew would be a desperate fight, I spoke to my crew. We were just one ship, against Saren's growing army. I assured them all that despite the odds, we could defeat him. Liara saw through my words. She knew I was hurting after Caden's death. She could sense my doubts. We both knew this mission could be our last. Until that moment, we put our feelings aside for the sake of that mission. But why wait? We gave in to each other, and it was perfect. While it lasted. We arrived on Ilos, close behind Saren. Once on the planet, we discovered a Prothean databank that helped me put the final pieces of my vision together. The Reapers had come 50,000 years ago, and every 50,000 years before that, each time purging the galaxy of life. The Protheans had fought and died, like every species before them. But a few survived long enough to leave a parting gift. The Protheans had discovered that the Citadel was the key to controlling the mass relays. By sabotaging the Citadel, they found a way to close the relays to dark space, slowing the Reaper's return, giving us the time we needed to find a solution to stop the Reapers once and for all. Saren knew this. He was leading his army to take control of the Citadel and re-establish the relays to dark space, bringing the waiting Reapers here to destroy us all. We followed him to the Citadel. It was intact, but heavily damaged. He had caught the Council fleets by surprise and they were only now regrouping. And with Sovereign as his flagship, there was little hope the fleets could counterattack with enough strength to take back the Citadel. But Saren was done running, and I was done chasing him. As the Alliance and Citadel fleets battled Saren's army outside, I cornered the Turian bastard in the Citadel Tower and confronted him. He died believing that the Reapers would save him. As I fought to regain control of the Citadel, the Council's flagship, the Destiny Ascension, fell under attack. Despite Saren's death, Sovereign and Saren's army continued to fight. The Council was aboard the Destiny Ascension, and they were requesting assistance. But I knew in order to help them, I would have to put our Human Alliance fleet in jeopardy. The Council had to be saved. They represented the hearts and minds of the galactic community. Without them, the fleets would be in disarray. Even with the Citadel back in my control, Saren defeated, and the Normandy leading the combined galactic fleet. The battle against Sovereign, a single Reaper, was relentless. It took the combined fleets of humanity and the other races, but in the end, Sovereign fell. But the costs were immense. While humanity's efforts in the war earned us our first seat on the Council, it was a hollow victory. The Reapers were still out there. I knew the fight was far from over, but as the one who'd led the fight against Saren, I was given new responsibilities. The choice of humanity's first counselor was left for me to decide. On the one hand, Udina, the lifetime politician. Ruthless and ambitious, he would easily navigate the political landmines that would soon be put in front of him. The other choice, Captain Anderson, the career soldier. Tough but fair, but a friend and someone I could trust. Both great leaders in their own right. Anderson didn't want the job, which was a sure sign he'd be perfect for it. No ambition to get in the way. The war was over. The threat had passed. In time, the Council would rebuild itself. The Citadel could be repaired. Even the pain of lost friends would fade. But none of that mattered if the Reapers were still out there. And if they were all as powerful as Sovereign, we had to find a way to stop them. I had to find a way. I gathered my crew, took my ship, and went in search of answers. Officially, the Council would only say I was assigned to cleanup duty, rooting out any remnants of Saren's army. Just another routine mission. Just another routine mission.